one 6,000 biofalls was not gonna be enough, but we had to add another one because they needed more filtration. We wanted to make this project as maintenance free as possible. Look at how we're gonna take this 20 year old pond, completely transform this yard and make it an epic looking pond. Hey guys, it's Brian from Team Aquascape and our channel is all about transforming outdoor living spaces with water features. Design and installation is who we are and building backyard dreams is what we do. All right, pond people, this is kind of an unusual one. This is a pond we built, feels like six, seven, maybe even eight years ago. But for all intents and purposes, it's a really nice pond. Not much I would change with the pond. It's definitely void of a lot of plants, but it's that time of year where a lot of perennials have gone down. They've gone ahead and taken the liberty to move some of the perennials because we're going to be making this pond much bigger. But there is absolutely nothing with that pond. In fact, I was really proud of it when we built it the first time. So we're gonna come in here and not just put a bomb in the backyard, but like like all the bombs in the backyard. It's a really, really tight space. You can see the distance from the fence to the house is probably only about 20 feet. Uh, so we're very limited in what we can do in that narrow space. But if you look around here to the left, you'll see that the yard kind of opens up and they've gone ahead and put in a new fence and given us even a little bit more real estate. So we're gonna come up with a totally new design and here's why they're doing a new design. The whole purpose of this design, and I think this is just so awesome, is because of their fish. Fantastic, fantastic people, never had the opportunity to have children, and their children are their koi. They've gotten really big in this small pond, and so we're gonna build them a much, much bigger home. And what I love most about it is it's just for these fish. So here we go, demoing everything down. Uh, it's crazy as always. We got rock deliveries showing up. We're ripping the pond out. We get our mats down, make sure we protect that lawn as much as we possibly can. Of course, there's always gonna be some lawn restoration. There's all kinds of things going on. We got sod cutters running, stripping off that grass. We're gonna haul all that grass away. I can't stand it when that stuff grows back up through the soil later. Um, I'm sitting here plucking out some of the bigger boulders that we couldn't move by hand, so get those plucked out of there. We're gonna fold up that liner, get the liner out, and then we're just gonna start digging. Uh, we're gonna take the original pond, make it deeper. It was uh, two feet deep. We're gonna take uh, a majority of this pond three feet deep. Uh, we're gonna eliminate a lot of shallow shelves in this pond, uh, which should really reduce the idea of a heron coming in and grabbing these fish. Here and have a really hard time grabbing fish out of deep water. And I think this is interesting. Look at the soil substrate there. Go from black soil to clay to black soil. And that's just typical. These old subdivisions, they ripped off all the good stuff, replaced it with clay, and then put dusted the, you know, the surface with some black topsoil again, just for grass purposes. It looks like a few layer cake. We're getting the pond excavated. A little tricky on this one. I couldn't excavate the entire pond all at once. Uh, it would really limit our access with that machine, setting some of the bigger boulders. So we fold up the, we put the liner in, roll it up all the way to the edge, rock in the section we want to rock in, and then later we'll come back, dig the rest of the pond, and then fold the rest of that liner out. Now here we are setting our wall stone. Now you guys have seen us do this a lot, and it's just, I don't know if it's a trend we're going through right now, a phase, but I love doing it. It's just an easy way to rock in a section of the pond, especially on the viewing side. Now I don't think it's mo the most aesthetically pleasing looking wall right here. I like the serpentine look, but nobody's gonna see it. Uh, the viewing area is from the house. Eventually a blue stone patio is gonna hang out over that. You'll never ever pay attention the wall it lets us rock in a very vertical section two to three feet tall right in there very vertical section very very fast and then lets us cantilever that patio over the top it also doesn't take up a whole lot of real estate where if i did a bunch of boulders in there it would take up a lot more real estate than the the 10 inch wide wall right there and you can see we're just you know folding liner back digging things in just doing our rock work there's that wall just about complete the other side's all boulders because that's the side you're going to see the most we want that side to look as natural as possible. We've also got a big bridge coming into this project so you can see where the wall kind of stopped. The reason we stopped the wall right there was because uh, we got to change a little bit of that. We have to add to it to support the bridge. up the filtration in this so we added a 6,000 biofalls and one of our new filter bowls now this pond definitely warrants because of the size of it a wetland filter normally I would have a hundred percent put a wetland filter on this but the budget didn't allow for it and the customers promised me they weren't thinking of doing any more fish now do I think they might get caught up in the fact that they'll buy a couple more for sure but as long as they don't go overboard with the fish two biofalls and the filter bowl are definitely gonna 
keep this pond crystal crystal clear. So here we are, you got that liner folded back, we dug the rest of it out, now you can kind of see the, the entire size of this pond. We didn't just make it bigger, we made it about six times bigger. So really, really big pond. There we are putting that wall in for the bridge. Here we are playing around. A big part of what we do is R&D. Uh, we're constantly field testing new product and stuff. And this is a new fabric mat that has hand holds in it. Now it's typically used so guys can just grab sides of the fabric and then carry those boulders. Here we are just testing the strength of those handles. And that's about 800 pound rock right there. So getting that rock down in there. The nice thing about the mats too is once you've set the rock, you can just leave the mat in the pond. So it gives us a nice cushion on top of the liner, ease of dropping the boulder in. But like I said, normally we would just strap that boulder and put it down in there. Oh, here's Jackie boy talking about the planned rock and the whole pond in. He's rocked most of that stuff in. I rocked a little bit in the old section over there. Uh, placed that bowl. Chris doing his thing, cutting these boulders in into the shape of the wall. Jack leveling out both the supports for that bridge. That bridge can just drop right in. It's really important that it's uh, level side to side and front to back. There's the bridge. Put up a little guardrail on it just to uh, make sure people are focused on where they're walking and uh, nobody older is going to fall into the pond over time. Well, the hardest part about that bridge is making it look like it's sunk in. If I had a little bit more space, maybe back where some of those buckets are, I'd even burn that up a little bit more. But with proper landscaping and get some height on the back side of that bridge, it'll really make the bridge feel kind of sunken down in. Things are really coming together at this point. You got another wall over here that we put in, foreground there. We're going to have another patio cantilever out over that. So a bridge that kind of comes around and, and leads to that patio. All right, so you've seen how it's gotten to the end. Now it's time to show you the best part. It's finished, finished. And when I say finished, I mean the landscaping, the hardscaping, the fish are back in. So come on, let's go back here. This is actually the first time I'm seeing it finished too. I can't wait to share this moment with you guys. Look at the patio. Jeff from Premier Landscaping did such a killer job. Just kind of gave an idea of where the patio should sit and let him do his thing and I love this. I love the huge giant pavers he chose. That really helps like these rocking chairs rock smooth without things falling into joints. You can see the Mr. and Mrs. Spade have already picked out a little fire pit over here, got their other chairs back in and around it. What an awesome spot. And the one thing they really wanted was a place that they could sit in the afternoon without being blasted by the sun. And so sitting over here behind the house and being able to still look at the pond, see the fish, see some waterfalls off in the distance, was really, really special and important for him. And I think we achieved that. You guys see us do this over and over. And this is something we love doing, bringing that pond right up next to a hardscape. So if you remember during the construction, we just come in here, we do a composite brick wall right on top of the liner. That liner flips back over the wall like this. And then a, a soldier course or a capstone can go back on top, allowing that pond to come right up close to the patio without taking a whole lot of real estate up. They can come over here and feed the fish right from their hand. The other thing that's great about this pond is the circulation. So you can see we've got some jets over in this area. The best thing about these jets, yes, it helps circulate water from a dead area, but in the winter, all they have to do is come down here, angle these guys up, and that turns into a permanent winter de-icer. So they never have to deal with adding bubblers or heaters or anything. As long as that water's moving, this aggressively, this will always stay open. In the summer, when they want to calm it down a little bit, they can just push this down, and there we go. We got that kind of gentle flow. They want to push it down even more, they just angle these, and they can keep changing that flow. We wanted to make this project as maintenance-free as possible, so I tell them right now, with all the bells and whistles that we put on this pond, your pond is on autopilot, so they don't have to pull pumps, they don't have to put in floating heaters, they don't have to do de-icers, um, they don't have to do aerators, all that stuff is in here. And they want it to be on autopilot because they care so much about their fish. Several times they've told me they've never had children. These fish are like their children. Speaking of, let's go check out those fish.
Now you can see why they're so attached to them. They've gotten pretty big and they got really, really big in a small pond. That original pond went from here to about that sweet flag area over there and that's it. So they had, I think they had 10 fish living in a nine by 14 foot size pond, really shrunk in. Now we've more than quadrupled the size of the pond, giving their children a place that they can actually swim around and enjoy for the rest of their lives. We added another waterfall over on the side over here. The main reason we had to add that other waterfall was not aesthetics. This waterfall was already really lined up for the viewing from inside the house. But we had to add another one because they needed more filtration. One 6,000 biofalls was not gonna be enough, so we had to add another one. We also added one of our filter bowls over here. We haven't put the filter media in it yet. Next spring, we'll add all that filter media, but between that 6,000 biofalls, this 2,500, and then the filter bowl, which is equivalent to the filtration of a 2,500, this pond is gonna stay crystal, crystal clear. Over here, we did the same thing. We used that wall stone inside the pond, which allowed us to then cantilever a blue stone, a natural blue stone, right out over the top, where we didn't have to use a soldier course. I love this look because it just allows you to look straight down into the water. And then the final thing that we added was this bridge. The bridge was kind of an evolution in the design. We knew we wanted to do a bridge. We weren't sure exactly what type of bridge we wanted to do. They were really dead set on doing a stone slab. I just couldn't find a stone slab long enough. So I built this out in the front yard. It works out perfect. It allows them to have a 42 inch wide bridge, about seven feet long, effortlessly kind of come out over to it. And one of my things is a bridge always has to lead to something. Here, the design didn't allow it to really lend back into the patio. So as you walk this way, the bridge will lead you over to eventually what will be a bird feeder sitting right over here. And they really, really love their bird feeders. So they've got bird feeders all over in the yard. The birds allow a lot of visual interest, so there's still a destination point for the bridge to take you to. Jack Bazinski, Andrew Pape, Bud, Chris Z, the rest of the guys from Team Aquascape built this without me touching a single boulder. The only thing I did on this project was give a little bit of guidance on the design, kind of lay out where things were gonna go, help lay out where the bridge was gonna go, help lay out the pond. They placed every single rock. These guys are getting so, so talented. It makes me so proud to see them not just love the project, but really enjoy the art of placing all the boulders. They did such an awesome job. The thing that was most important to me about this project though, was the customers. Mr. and Mrs. Spade were just so fantastic. They were really just hands off, Brian, do your thing, whatever you wanna do. The hospitality was endless. And uh, you guys, thank you so much for trusting us to do this in your yard. Hopefully you like this episode. Uh, tell me your favorite part like you all have so many times in the past, and we'll do it again real soon.